bring in retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General um, Richard Newton. Uh, General, good morning. Put the politics and the diplomacy aside real quickly, um, and you think about sort of the, the strategic ambiguity the Israelis want to maintain. But it sent an un unmistakable message to the Iranians, right? Number one, we don't take orders from Washington. But number two, um, anytime, anywhere, any place, um, we can hit you. And at least as far as we were able to tell, uh, the Iranians may not even have known that Israeli uh, planes entered their airspace until after things started blowing up. How impressive, from a military standpoint, is what Israel did last night? Well, good morning, Leland, and, and Marky as well. Uh, I think it's significant last night that uh, Israel was able to strike uh, in the central region of, of Iran. It's the home of uh, their nuclear weapons production facility. It's also home to uh, one of their drone manufacturing plants. Uh, it's also the home, Leland, to uh, the S-300 Russian air missile defense system uh, that is perhaps one of the best in the world. Uh, so it's significant here that they were able to strike uh, my sources still haven't confirmed yet whether it was manned or unmanned. I suspect it was unmanned. Uh, this is also similar to the strike that they conducted back in January 2023. Uh, and so that they were able to, to go in and, and strike. Uh, and then, you know, obviously uh, trying to keep a lid on the escalatory nature of this. I saw a term last night uh, in, in media as I was getting prepared. It, it was a new term perhaps called de-escalatory strike. Uh, that perhaps could have been conducted. But nonetheless, I believe it was effective uh, for uh, uh, Israel to have to do something after that, uh, what I view was the largest attack in the Mideast uh, back on Saturday night. My, my final point here is that uh, you just cannot rely to reset deterrence or strategic deterrence just on the defensive, as we saw was an exceptional uh, capability uh, displayed on Saturday night. You have to do something offensively, in my opinion. And this strike uh, last night, I think, uh, lends itself to perhaps rebalancing the strategic deterrence equation that we vitally need to see uh, in the Mideast. And General, just, I mean, mere hours before this counteroffensive took place, you had Iran's foreign minister issuing that warning to Israel, right, saying if you come back at us after our weekend attack, we are ready to respond in full immediately to the maximum level after you've crossed red lines. What we're seeing this morning play out, I mean, is this a strong enough counteroffensive attack to see another Iranian response lobbed at Israel? I think so. I think it's what we would put in our playbook as a limited strike. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you're going to see a lot of rhetoric coming out, a lot of stern rhetoric coming out of Iran. I'll let that play out. But what we need to be watching more closely, perhaps, is is now and uh, moving forward through the next several hours, perhaps the next several days, what is the action of the Iranian proxies? Uh, certainly my most, uh, what I would be most concerned about if I'm Israel is Hezbollah to the north. They've got tremendous capabilities to strike Iran or disregard Israel uh, with missiles and, and rockets and so forth. And they've demonstrated a capability and a will to do that. Uh, so nonetheless, I'm, I'm looking to see how these proxies react. Let's not forget the proxies uh, that they have, uh, Iran has in Iraq and Syria. We've got 2,500 men and women in Iraq. We've got about 900 in Syria and so forth. So if I'm in the Pentagon right now, I'm just as concerned about the safety uh, and the security of our, our troops overseas in the Mideast region, specifically uh, placed in uh, Iraq and in Syria at the moment. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.